How to fit a hidden front wheel bearing housing kit as fitted to many Volkswagen Audi Group vehicles. Knock the hub centre cap out. With the centre cap removed, it gives you enough room to get through the hub. This is um, 36 millimeter. Now you've got the car under load, you can break it off. This makes it easier to remove the hub nut when you haven't got the wheel and brake assembly on. But you only want to do this if you're definitely replacing the bearing. As under load it puts too much pressure on the bearing and could damage it. Now I want to jack the car up and put it on axle stands. Take the wheel off. Now we've broken the nut off. We can take the caliper off and then the disc off. Get the hub nut out. There's the hub nut. A good idea would be to take this dust guard off. Now I've, uh, I've replaced this dust guard with some new stainless steel bolts. Uh, they're quite rusted off usually. You can find in my other video how to remove these bolts and replace them. Just little short nuts that comes off and then this is the ABS sensor and I'll be taking that out and if you find that difficult to get out you can do another video on how to take out the ABS sensor. So we're going to take this joint off. Next you've got to take your ball joint off. On this you don't have to take the actual ball joint nut off. The bottom part is bolted, bottom wishbone arm, with three bolts. There's one there, one there and one there. And these are probably rusted in so plenty of WD on the back. You can see the nuts on the, on the top part. Put your WD on there and then brush these up and then take them off. These are a 13 millimeter socket. Take the plate off the back. Should be able to just slide the hub out. Just tap the spline a bit. Pull the hub out. Push the drive shaft back. Rotate it. And you get to the back of the hub. I'm taking a look at the new bearing. A new nut. New bearing. Now that's, that's the outer race. That's your tone ring. That's the ABS sensor ring there, around there. Be careful not to damage that. Your ABS sensor will just rest on the side of that as it's going around. You can't do this by just knocking the old bearing out and then knocking this one out, this one in from the front, or pressing it in from from here. You can't press it in from from this flange because you'll be pushing. The flange is attached to the centre of the bearing, the, the, the spindle shaft which is on the centre of the bearing, so you will, you will wreck the bearing. What you'll need to do is, is push from, from here on the outside of the bearing, so you need a special tool. So this is the tool that you need. That will fit on there like that and then you'll you'll attach something on the back and you will pull it in so that's what that that's what I'm going to do now there's two circular discs one is to extract the bearing and one will be to put it back in the smaller one to extract the the bearing because you'll be pulling 
the, the back of the bearing out of the of the hub and then you've got a larger one fits on this yeah. shoulder here all the way around it and that's when you're putting it back in because you'd be pulling against that and the smaller one there's a flat area that is so it lines up with the with the where the ABS sensor is so if you don't take the ABS sensor out you could still get the bearing out by putting the flat next to the ABS sensor and then pulling the bearing out that way so these rings, I'll clean all this up before I do it, they just fit over the shoulder so you, you, you're pulling and it will just miss, the bearing will come out here, it'll come out in between there, and it's extracted out. Now you get your, this front disc, this is a, a um, a pressure bearing so this turns quite easily now put these in insert the five till fingers through the wheel bolt holes of the hub flange onto the side door plates so I'll grease the shaft now bolt on Pulling it out, you can see the bearing coming out. That's that part. That's with this serrated part, all rusty. You can see it moving. Hopefully you can see that on the video. There we are. So that's the whole bearing in the in that tool. I'll set the tool off. That'll just drop off. Now all this needs to be cleaned up. All this, all this corrosion, because it, this, this inner surface is accurate, and that has to be perfect. And especially where it sits up against the, sh the rear shoulder, because that governs how far in it goes, and it has to be correct. So it has to be a, a really good fit up against that shoulder. So this is the the hub cleaned up, and I've. I've cleaned out all these rebates. This rebate here is all cleaned up and where the bearing surface meets the shoulder at the back there's a little rebate actually that just it goes down a little bit and I may, had to make sure I cleaned all that out. So that's, that's for when the bearing goes in it doesn't trap any particles and stops the bearing going right up to the shoulder and it just leaves a little bit of grease in the, in the back to seal it. Uh, this rebate here is to fit this ring here. So the recommended grease that you put in here is uh, mollycoat grease, specific for, which is high pressure uh, specific grease for this. So you just want to smear the inside of that surface. So we're going to take the new bearing and fit these these side door plates. They just fit up to that shoulder. Take care to line the wheel bearing up precisely to the wheel hub housing horizontally and vertically. This has to be perfectly in line to start. Then you want to gently tap around through the hub onto the side plates which marry up to the outer 
bearing race to make sure the bearing is perfectly aligned before using the tool to press form the bearing. Refit the tool and put the larger bush on the rear of the bearing hub, then slowly draw the bearing into the hub. As the bearing meets the rear shoulder, the circlip will clip into place and make an audible clip, letting you know that the bearing is fully in place, which you can see here just behind the hub flange. You can see that it's, it's moved, pushed it right up to the shoulder. So that's in now. Clean up the end of the drive shaft and put polycarbamide grease on the splines. But keep the thread at the end of the drive shaft completely free of grease as we need that to be dry for the lock nut to fit on. And insert the drive shaft back into the hub housing and refit the bottom ball joint. Now all you've got to do is use your torque wrench to torque up the lock nut to the correct torque without the wheel being on so the bearing is under no load whatsoever. In this case with this car it, and bearing it is 50 newton meters initially and then you've got to do it another 45 degrees after that. Which you can do by using a marker pen. Mark the hub and the hub nut with a marker pen to carry out the 45 degrees final tightening. And there you have it. You should be good to go then. Jobs are good. And don't forget to check the bearing and hub nut after approximately 100 miles. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.